The last type of structure that we're going to learn how to draw is something called a coordinate covalent bond. Sometimes when elements combine to form compounds, one atom donates both of its electrons into a bond while the other atom doesn't contribute anything. To put it in simple terms, one of the atoms is being a big mooch. This type of bond is called a coordinate covalent bond. I do want to emphasize that it's really rare, so use this as a last resort if you can't think of any other way to draw your structure. Just a little tip as to when you might see that coordinate covalent bonding, since it is rare, it does happen most often in acids and polyatomic ions. You learned in your periodic table uh, trends lab that when something was an acid, the chemical formula starts with a hydrogen. So if you see a hydrogen at the beginning of your formula, your radar should go up. That maybe coordinate covalent bonding might be happening in that structure. Polyatomic ions, like we talked about before, the prefix poly means many atoms, and then ion means it has a charge, right? Many atoms with a charge. So if you see a group of atoms, for example, NO3 minus 1, that's nitrogen and oxygen with a charge. SO4 minus 2, that's sulfur and oxygen with a charge. If you have acids or polyatomic ions, it's possible that that coordinate covalent bonding might be happening. So when we have this coordinate covalent bonding, we're going to highlight the bond uh, and then draw an arrow starting from the atom, donating the electrons to the one receiving them. It's important to note that coordinate covalent bonds don't exhibit any special properties at all. They act like any other traditional covalent bond where one atom contributes one electron and the other atom contributes one. They just simply explain how some otherwise impossible structures can exist. So the first example we're going to look at that has coordinate covalent bonding is carbon monoxide. We'll draw a carbon and an oxygen. Carbon's in the 4A family, so I'm going to give it four dots. And then oxygen's in the 6A family, so I'm going to give him six dots. Just so you can see which element is the one that's donating the electrons to the bond, I'm going to use X's to represent oxygen's electrons. You don't have to do this. I think it's just easier for me to show you for this coordinate covalent example where the electrons are coming from. If it's all dots, you can't see which of the dots belong to the carbon and which belong to the oxygen. So when we first start, carbon and oxygen make a single bond. That's enough, not yet enough for either the carbon or the oxygen. The oxygen right now has two, four, six, seven, and the carbon has two, three, four, five. So a single bond isn't enough. The next thing that happens is a double bond forms. So this lonely electron over here, he's going to move into the middle. And maybe this top dot over here, he's going to move into the middle. If we check and see how everyone's doing now, the carbon has two, four, five, six, and the oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So the oxygen is content right now, but the carbon's not. The carbon would like to share more since it only has six electrons around it right now. But the oxygen doesn't want to share more because if we tried to slide this one up, let's say into the middle, and then slide this guy up into the middle, then if you see here, our oxygen would now have two, four, six, eight, nine. That's too many. And we still haven't fixed the carbon. Two, four, six, seven. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to back that up a little bit. 
and let's put things back to the way they were. So the oxygen doesn't want any more electrons than what it already has, but the carbon needs some. So what the oxygen does is it helps out the carbon and says, all right, carbon, you did share two of your electrons with me, so you're pretty nice. I guess I'll share a little bit more with you. So I don't want any more of your electrons, so you keep them to yourself. So I'm going to just move this bottom electron out of the way. And then two of oxygen's electrons get moved into the middle. Both of these guys are coming from the oxygen. And rather than being a lone pair, they form an additional bond. That way the oxygen doesn't have any additional electrons around it, but our carbon now has two, four, six, eight, like it wants. These top electrons on the oxygen would probably move over to the side just to kind of get out of the way and spread out a little bit more. So the top two bonds in that structure had one element donating one electron. But the bottom bond here, both of these guys came from the oxygen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to the mooch and say, hey, carbon, I'm going to turn this into an arrow. You didn't contribute to that bond at all. So here's kind of what the, the final draw, drawing would look like. A triple bond in the middle, lone pairs on either side, and that bottom bond only is a coordinate covalent bond. Let's try one more of those. What if we had ozone, O3? So just like last time, I'll use dots, 6A family, so six dots. I'm gonna use X's on that middle oxygen just so we can kind of keep track of where the electrons are coming from. And dots once again on the right. So the first thing that happens is this oxygen and this guy bond. And then I see a lonely electron over here. So a single bond probably isn't going to cut it. So this guy moves into the middle. And this guy is also going to move into the middle. We get a double bond. So right now, this oxygen has two, four, six, eight, as does the middle oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Both of these guys are good, but we know that ozone exists. So how on earth do we get that third oxygen to hook onto here without disrupting the balance that this guy already has? Well, this middle oxygen doesn't want any of this oxygen's electrons because he already has eight. So he says to the right oxygen, I don't want any of yours. So you keep your six electrons all to yourself, move them away. But what I can do is take two of my electrons and instead of them being a lone pair, I'll move them into the middle and they become bonding electrons instead. <laughs> that guy doesn't want to move over, does he? So they become bonding electrons instead. Now, my right hand oxygen has two, four, six, eight. My middle oxygen, two, four, six, eight. And my left hand oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Everybody has what they want. This bond right here was our coordinate covalent bond. Both of the electrons came from the oxygen in the center. So what our final draft would look like, we'd have that double bonded O, a lone pair on the central atom, a single bond with three lone pairs, 
And then this bond was our coordinate covalent bond, where the oxygen on the right was being a mooch. It didn't contribute at all. This is the hardest type of bonding, but the good news is it's also the most rare. I'm not going to try and trick you when we take our Lewis dot structure quiz with lots of coordinate covalent bonding. I did just want to put it on your radar, um, challenge you guys a little bit since you are an honors chem, uh, to explain why those otherwise impossible structures can exist.